Hello, my Soccer Universe. Let's summarize what has happened just before the international break in Europe's big leagues outside of Serie A and the Austrian Bundesliga. No one is really talking them up as title favorites. However, Arnes lost Liverpool, get a 1 0 away win at Crystal Palace, still winless under Oliver Glasler. I'm getting a little bit worried. And I'm first in the table going into the second international break of the season. Diogo Jota getting the winning goal early on in the ninth minute, with Liverpool wasting quite a few chances in the first half. Second half, game was a little bit more even. Yes, they allow some chances, but in the end, it's a 1 0 win, six wins out of seven games top of the table. And as is typically after a Champions League week, the performances of the big teams are not really keeping up with what you see in the midweek. Arsenal found themselves down 1-0 to Southampton. Early on in the second half through an Archer goal, however then it's the Saka show, assisting the first two through Havertz and Martinelli before scoring the third one himself. Arsenal keeping very much up there. The scoreline is crazy, Brentford 5, Wolves 3. I want to mention it because Brentford broke the streak of scoring the first minute, the score only the second minute. What are you doing to me, Brentford? 4-2 at the half already. Absolute mad game where Wolves initially twice equalized, but then Brentford ran away with it. Leicester is off the winless list, getting a 1-0 win over Bournemouth with Buenote scoring early in the game. If Adama Traore would be hitting reliably the back of the net, Fulham could have gotten a famous win at Manchester City. They were very much the equal to Manchester City. Manchester City didn't look right, took the lead through Pereira, Kovacic before and after the half, give City the lead again before Doku doubles their lead. However, then Rodrigo Muniz very quickly pulls one back, but in between so many chances for Fulham, there could have been more. City probably should have lost that game. West Ham coach Lopetegui is also breathing a sigh of relief, winning 4-1 against Ipswich, so the bad streak is over. Antonio Oris opening the scoring in the first minute before the lap in the sixth minute pulls one back, and then it's Kudos, Bowen and Paqueta who secure the emphatic win. It was billed as the match of the round, and maybe the last one for Eric Ten Hag. Aston Villa nil, Manchester United nil, not much to talk home about. Probably just about enough to keep Ten Hag in the job, although Honestly, he really shouldn't be in there anymore. It's the worst start in United's Premier League history. Beating last season start, both under Ten Hag. Chelsea's winning streak is also coming to an end. They're held by Forrest to a 1-1 draw. Chris Wood opened the scoring Madueke a few minutes later. Do equalize. Ward Prowse is sent off. This was a rough and tough game. Chelsea, maybe this time not so much fun. Still, I actually have my hopes high for them for this season. And then it was up the Highline Derby. Not my invention. Brighton beat Spurs 3-2 after being 2-0 down at halftime. Spurs completely dominant, having the game more or less in the bag. Brandon Johnson opening story, Madison doubling it up. And then by midway through the second half, Brighton had turned around. Spurs completely falling apart and you really wonder why this is happening. It was Minte, Rütter and then Welbeck who got the winner. When talking about the German Bundesliga, two themes continue. A. The Bundesliga is the most goal-scoring league this season so far. It is just crazy. It's almost three and a half goals per game, which is an absolute mad average. It's also only six rounds in. And the second threat that continues is that teams that performed well in the Champions League didn't do all that well in the Bundesliga. And they are it's typically also ahead of international break. Case in point, Dortmund, the most frustrating team in Germany, easily losing Fully deserved 2-1 at Union Berlin. Vogt and Fertessen already scoring the goals for Union in the first half. Riesen pulls one back. It's too little, too late. Union Berlin, the big winners. They also have new plans for an absolute massive stadium with plenty of standing room, as is typical for Union. Case 2, Leverkusen, who again give up an easy lead. They lead after 10 minutes 2-0. Boniface and Hoffmann scoring a goal from Boniface disallowed. And then Geschwil gets a goal just before the halftime break. And Arp with a penalty equalizes in the 69th minute for Holstein Kiel. Lowly Holstein Kiel get the second point of the season against the defending champions. Meanwhile, Wolfsburg also get a rare win. This time it's a 3-1 away win at Bochum, who more or less look like a relegation candidate. Win scoring a double, the second one on a rebound from a penalty. After last week's big win at Freiburg, this time St. Pauli lose 3-0 at home to Mainz. A result that very much puts Mainz mid-table, where St. Pauli have to look towards the bottom of the table. Of the top teams, Leipzig are the only one that won. It's also a team that played in Champions League, but they lost to Juventus in really crazy manner. This time they went to Heidenheim. Not an easy ground by any stretch of imagination. However, they also have 
a day more to recover. It's open in the 59th minute that gives Leipzig a overall deserved winner. Leipzig now second in the table. But of course the big clash was Eintracht Frankfurt taking on Bayern Munich ahead of the round. This was 2v1 and it was everything that he won from a 3-3 draw. Plenty of lead changes, plenty of goal score of course. Bayern controlled that game absolutely left and right. It was also a matchup of two of the worst jerseys released this year in the Bundesliga. In any case Kim and Jay gave Bayern the lead in the 15th minute. However Marmusha and Ekitike turned it around before Upamecano before the halftime break. Kane equalized for Bayern. Then Olise takes over. Kane assist. Kane has not scored in three games for Bayern. Also kind of unbelievable. And it looked like Bayern Munich with all the control is gonna see this game out and then the defense still doesn't hold tight. Ebimbe sends Marmouche in stoppage time. Humanes has a free run onto Neuer and it's 3-3. Crazy game, big points and it also means that not really much has changed up top because Bayern didn't use this opportunity to separate themselves from the other contenders. And then we exchanged manager derby between Stuttgart and Hoffenheim. It ends 1-1 and Stuttgart get a very very late equalizer through a Demirovic penalty. No, not a penalty. It was the rebound after the penalty actually had been saved. Gendre gave Hoffenheim the lead. This is hope for Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim is a team that is very much behind the scenes in disarray. New sporting director come coming in. So huge result for them. They maybe slowly move out of the relegation zone. On a larger picture, I think it will go down as points lost for Stuttgart. In the last match of the eighth round of the Eredivisie, AZ lost a second consecutive match, this time at Sittard. Fully deservedly so. Sittard also missed a penalty through Halilovic before Good gives them the winner. And so AZ are kind of breaking away, allowing PSV to continue their more or less solo run to the title. PSV themselves had to come back from an early deficit against Sparta through Lauritsen. However, an own goal and a Luc de Jong goal just before the half win it for PSV, who also played then quite some while with a man less since Dumps was sent off with a straight red. With a game in hand, admittedly at Ajax, Utrecht is probably the only team that matches PSV's record at the moment. They only have one draw and then wins otherwise. They get another win, a 3-2 against Valwijk. Again, not an easy win down in the second minute, however then a Valwijk player is sent off and Utrecht can turn it around 3-1. In the end it ends 3-2 and Utrecht remain in second spot. The third team that's unbeaten in the Eredivisie is Feyenoord. However, four draws don't really help. This time they get a win, a big win, a 2-1 over Twente. Ueda and Huang in Bum already get the goals in the first half before Stein pulls one back. Who else but Stein for Twente? But Feyenoord finally a win again. If they would go on a roll, maybe they could challenge PSV, but it is a tall order. Ajax also get another win, a 3-1 over Groningen. However, the final result is not as emphatic as the match film, if you would like. Ajax had a 1-0 halftime lead through Klaas and Hava Schreuders, equalizes midway through the second half. However, the game was then decided in stoppage time by Wout Weichert, who first scores this 2-1 and then assists Akpom for the third one. Very, very late win for Ajax, that one. On the other side, Ajax now sit with two games in hand in fifth place. If they win those two games in hand, not easy ones against Utrecht and Feyenoord, they might actually climb up quite some. The Deserbi revolution in Marseille is stuttering seriously. They manage only a 1-1 draw at home to Angers and after a great start Marseille are now only in third place. The 1-1 is even more damning because they were up a man in the 26th minute. However, then Nil Moppe is quickly sent off with a yellow-red. Just a few minutes later they still take the lead through row, but this is also quickly equalized. They are now five points behind new league leaders Monaco. Monaco are league leaders in part because they beat Rennes away from home 2-1 till Kiera and Valorim Balogun scoring the goals. Blas had equalized in between all goals coming in the first 22 minutes. However, Adi Hütter doing a great job at Monaco. Maybe they can mount the title challenge. Because after a bright start, PSG also a little bit stuttering and their mediocre performance in the Champions League also are now shown in the league. Only a 1-1 one -one at Nice. Nice fully deserving. They have won the lead at the halftime through Abdi. Horrible for PSG. It gets better. Usman Dembele back in the squad. A season on the match for an equalizer. However, there is no winner for PSG, who now see two points behind Monaco. In other notable results, Lille, who had just beaten Real Madrid, had a much steeper challenge at home to Toulouse because they were 1 0 down through an Abuchal goal. Gomes and Bakker in the second half turned the game around. It's easier 
to beat Real Madrid than to lose. One thought I would ever say that. They are also kind of getting in the groove of things, beating in a Liga Classic, not 2 0 Taliafico and a Paloa on goal setting them on the way for the three points. Brest also very much needed win, they're only the third win of the season, 2-0 over Le Havre after their Champions League win over Salzburg, they double it up with another big one. And last but not least we also have Keito Nakamura, watch, former last player scores again for Reims, this time it's the 2-0 and a 4-2 win over Montpellier, Reims sitting now level on points with Marseille in fourth place, watch out for them, would love to see them qualifying for European competition. Espanyol put a stop to Real Mallorca's really good form, winning 2-1 at home through goals by Kumbula and Jofre. Fruity George, or Jorge de Frutos, turns around the game at Usela, Real Valladolid, winning 2-1 away from home. Much needed win for Rayo Valladolid, still down there in the doldrums. Real Madrid got actually a pretty good 2-0 win over well informed via Real. Via Real playing quite well in the first 30 minutes or so. They were down to a Valverde shot that got deflected. But then the game kind of fell asleep. It was reignited when Vinny Jr. takes a brilliant shot from outside the box, sells the game for Real Madrid, and then the big downer. Cavacal tears his ACL and is out for considerable time. The craziest game of the weekend happened in Girona, where Girona got a much needed 2-1 win over Athletic Club. However, Athletic Club saw three penalties saved by Gazaniga, who is now a hero after giving up more or less two own goals in the Champions League. He first saves a penalty by Berenguer, then Aspria gives Girona the lead. However, that lead was quickly equalized by Sunset. And then it is Iñaki Williams who takes a penalty that is again saved by Gazaniga. However, it has to be re retaken. Because of that, Ander Herrera steps up to take the pressure off Iñaki and <laughs> he sees his penalty saved as well. And then late stoppage time drama, Paredes is sent off, it's a penalty for Girona and Stuani converts. Absolute mad game. And over in Vitoria, Barcelona get a 3-0 win at the Medi Sorotha with Lewandowski scoring a first half hat-trick, a so-called pure hat-trick in German. He is in really, really good form and definitely profiting from Hansi Flick, knowing his qualities and being there for him, setting the team up around him. For all the great atmosphere, the Seville Derby again produces a stinker, Sevilla win it. Again, on a very dubious hands penalty, Luca Bacchio converts that one. Betis are now nine games in a row winless against their big city rivals. It was also the last derby for Juan Jesus Navas. And in San Sebastian, Atletico took a first minute lead through Julian Alvarez. However, they then shut up shop and of course conceding equalizer. Very brilliant goal through Sucic, but this is what will cost Atleti in the end because they cannot see out games and they are not going for the jugular. Gonna change that, Diego Simeone. The high-flying Eagles of promoted Santa Clara came a little bit closer down to earth, losing 1-0 at More Range, still staying in fourth place. Meanwhile, Sporting had a rather routine 2-0 win over Casa Pia after dropping the first points of the season at PSV in Eindhoven in the Champions League. It is Braganza and who else? Victor Gjökeres, who get the goals for Sporting. Meanwhile, a super long stoppage time allowed Boavista to come back in set stoppage time after being 2-0 down to Vittoria de Guimaraes away from home. Desinio scoring both goals, both from the penalty spot. Benfica's game in Nacional could not be played due to heavy fog. And last one, before the international break, we had Porto taking on local rivals Braga. It ends with a 2-1 win for Porto, who had a goal disallowed early on, take the lead through a Galeno penalty. And you know, they also had the burden of conceding a late 3-3 equalizer against Manchester United. This time they also conceded equalized through for lunch. However, Pepe re-established that one. Porto, hang on. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!